the Reynolds Aluminum Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The Reynolds Metals Company, makers of Reynolds Aluminum, presents Fibber McGee and Molly transcribed. The show is directed by Max Hutto with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. Agricultural leaders in this country have coined a phrase that's pretty important. They say farm buildings are tools, meaning that they are instruments of production. They work for profit. They have to be built to pay off. And right now, there is the big reason why more and more farmers are building with Reynolds Lifetime Aluminum Roofing and Siding. You know, aluminum is priced no higher than before World War II. So you start with better value. Your dollars are still worth 100 cents in aluminum. You save on labor, too, because aluminum is strong yet light, easy to apply. You save on maintenance because aluminum never rusts, needs no painting. And most important, you increase production from poultry and livestock because aluminum reflects heat, keeps a building warmer in winter, cooler in summer. So make your farm buildings better tools with Reynolds Lifetime Aluminum Roofing and Siding. See your dealer. The Businessmen's Art Class meets tonight at the Wistful Vista Civic Center. The strictly hobby affair for part-time painters so guess who's practicing up in his living room right now with paints, brushes, and canvas? <laughs> yup, it's the Norman Rockhead of Wistful Vista. <laughs> and his wife, Fibber McGee and Molly. And when I found out that guys like Latrivia and Doc Gamble had took up art, guys with two left hands and ten thumbs apiece, I went right down and I rolled myself into the class. You enrolled yourself, dearie. How could I enroll when I hadn't even rolled myself into it yet? <laughs> Stand out of my light, will you? Thanks. Hey, how do I look in this smock and beret, Tootsie? Pretty professional, huh? Very fetching. Yep. Like a chubby cherub with a blue serge halo. <laughs> what is this thing again, the businessmen's art class? That's it. It's for businessmen only. How'd you get in? Pull. Pull? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pulled open the classroom door, pulled five bucks out of my pocket, pulled a couple of gags, and bingo, I'm a businessman. <laughs> Stand out of my life, will you? Thanks. I need that north light. You say Dr. Gamble belongs to it, too. Mm -hmm. Somehow I never thought of the doctor as an artist. Nobody does. The doc. <laughs> His idea of painting is to dip a brush in iodine and have a patient say, ah. Well, I will say he paints a mighty fine tonsil. <laughs> of course, when it comes to art, doc's got three strikes on him to start with. How? In the first place, he's got to have a brush with a four-foot handle, you know. Because with Doc's stomach, he can't stand close enough to the canvas to reach it with an ordinary brush. Oh, no, I don't think he's that. And being nearsighted, when he stands far enough back to reach it, he can't see it. <laughs> he showed me a painting he done last week. A painting of Doris Day and Dennis Day eating frankfurters. He called it Every Day Has His Dogs. <laughs> uh, dearie, are you going to paint something pretty soon? You've been cleaning those brushes off on that canvas for an hour. What do you mean, cleaning the brushes? I am painting. Stand out of my light, will you? You're what? Yeah. Well, this is art, my dear. This is my own impressionistic study of life. You see, to me, life... Hmm. Just a minute, Michelangelo. This is probably the French Academy of Art wanting to hang you already. <laughs> or a posse with the same idea. Come in. Oh, no, it's just Oli. Hello, Oli. Oh, hello, missus. Hello, McGee. Hey, why are you wearing the nightshirt, McGee? You used to get up? <laughs> oh, no, no, this ain't a nightshirt. That's a smock, Oli, like a sort of a loose coat. Yeah, my gosh, didn't you ever see anybody wearing one of these things before? Oh, sure, McGee. My missus always wears a smock when she's expecting a baby, but... <laughs> you don't mean that you... Oh, no, that's too unlikely. <laughs> 
is Ollie. Himself here has just joined an art class. He's learning to paint. Oh, I ain't exactly learning, of course, Ollie. Always have kind of dabbed in art in my spare time. Sort of a Sunday painter, you might call me. Then that's interesting work, McGee. Yeah. I was a Sunday painter myself at one time. Oh? Huh? I had a good job painting Sundays on window of the ice cream parlor there. <laughs> Painting is nice relaxation, Ollie, and I think everybody ought to have some kind of a hobby, don't you? Yeah, I think so, too, missus. You know, I make a suggestion like that once to my missus when I first get to know her, you know. Told her to take up a hobby of some kind, eh? Yeah, you know, she was used to the school, and she didn't know what to do with her spare time, so I say to her, Yenevieve, I say, a girl like you should have herself a hobby. And she say, oh, Ollie, that's so sudden, and the next thing I know, I'm wiping off lipstick, picking up rice, and four kids we got now. <laughs> She made a hobby of a hubby, did she? But to get back to art, Ollie, you see, the true artiste does not paint what one sees. The true artiste paints what one feels. Like this here. You take this picture I'm doing right now. That's a picture, McGee? It looked like a paint salesman fall downstairs with his sample case open. <laughs> well, he calls it life, Ollie. It's short for life in a pinwheel factory, I think. Well, to appreciate true art, one must have true understanding. This canvas is what we artists call an impressure or abstract. This is not what I see, you see. This is how I feel. You feel like that? Good gracious, McGee, go lie down quick. I get a doctor message. Goodbye, both you fellas. Oh. <laughs> Billy Mills in the orchestra, and how do you speak to an angel? Pretty tat who bit a guy named Shepard. He'd been setting on some polka dots and thought he was a leopard. <laughs> oh, the monkey now. <sighs> there we are, kiddo. Another painting all done. Mm -hmm. But what were you doing with the hammer and nail? What do you mean, what was I doing? All artists do that when they finish painting the canvas. Tacking it onto a wooden frame to keep it stretched out. It's awful hard to do, too, with the paint still wet and all. Why don't you tack it to the frame first and then paint on it? Oh, my gosh, Tootsie. I get some of the most interesting effects when I accidentally smear the paint all around. <laughs> you see that painting over there in the corner? Yes, I saw it when I first came into the room, and I've got a stiff neck from trying not to look that way again. <laughs> What's the name of that one? I call that one Kangaroo Reading Magazine on Fire Escape. <laughs> Why? Well, because that's what it looks like. You see, when I finish a painting, I stand it against the wall, walk across the room, turn my back to it, lean way over and look at it between my knees. You'd be surprised how different things look at. <laughs> this one looks like a kangaroo reading a magazine on a fire escape. I'm starting a new picture now that I'm going to call Gainsborough's Blue Boy. That's a pretty title, isn't it? Been used. <laughs> 
Oh, it has? Well, I can always pick up a minute. Come in. Oh, hi, old-timer. Hello, Mr. Old-timer. Hello, daughter. Hello, Johnny. What you doing with the paint and brushes and canvas? Painting? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just joined the businessmen's art class. It learns us how to appreciate art. Ever do any painting? Sure. Used to be a commercial artist. Painted signs on barns. Oh. Like, uh, Chew Buffalo Bill Cut Plug Tobacco. Look on the label for the spitting image of William F. Cody. <laughs> Stuff like that. You still work at it? Yes, daughter. In fact, I had me a job last week painting some road signs for the Whistles Vista Loan Company. Oh, then. Pick me out a big slab of stone and paint a sign on it that says, On the rocks? Stony broke? Well, you can take it for granite that we'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I didn't go on with the work because I was worried about Grandma. Oh, what happened to her? We well, don't know, daughter. I think it was my mistake. You see, kids, Sunday was Grandma's birthday. Oh? And she had a little black necklace and one of them glittering little black brooches I got her and a set of jet earrings to match. Fool that I was. Well, so I think jet earrings are pretty on elderly ladies. Oh, me too, Johnny, but I must have got the wrong kind of jet. Hmm? Grandma put them on, lit a match to get a better look at them, and what? <laughs> Off on the front porch like a skyrocket. <laughs> Last we seen a grandma was a vapor trail heading south, southwest. <laughs> That's why I can't get my mind on my job, kid. Oh, I see. So you go on with your work, boy. Remember, you're painting for two now. You and me. Dearie, when is the next meeting of the businessmen's art class? Tonight. That's why I'm painting so fast. Got to catch up with them other guys. I got a real feeling for this painting, you know what? How does it feel? Wet and slippery? No, no, no. I mean, I got a talent for it. Did you read where Betty Grable, the beautiful dancer, had her legs insured for a million bucks? Well, as a painter... You're going to insure your hands for a million? No, my pants. <laughs> for $16.50. Twice I've sat down in the wet paint now. <laughs> The last time was on a picture I called View of Battleship Maine. What did you do? Change the title to read As Seen from the Stern? <laughs> no, but yours is better. <laughs> I changed it to View of Battleship Maine as Seen by Rear Admiral. Oh, that's good. But I think yours is better. Hello, Molly. Hi, pal. Hi. Hello, hello. Hey, they tell me you've joined our businessmen's art class, pal. Yep. Good for you. You'll enjoy it. You've been a member a long time, Junior? Oh, several months. Mm. My cousin, Big Uppercut Wilcox, got me to join. Oh, he did? Yeah, I get a big kick out of it. I see you're practicing up. He certainly is, Mr. Wilcox. How do you like what he's done so far? Well, it's, uh, it has a certain, uh, well, there are one or two of them that, uh, <laughs> well, let's say they're interesting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's say that. You see, Junior, I've been studying the theory of color. Now, when you mix red and blue to get green... Pardon me, Brother Shelley. Hmm? You mix red and blue to get purple. I don't. I mix red and blue to get green. <laughs> With what result, pal? I keep getting purple. <laughs> hey, what time is class tonight, Junior? Eight o'clock, and I'll be there. Can't wait, as a matter of fact. You really like it, Mr. Wilcox. Oh, I love it, Molly. Some of the fellows in our class turn out some mighty good work, too. Mm -hmm. I saw a picture down there last week that was just terrific. Yeah, what was it of, Junior? What was it of? Well, this was a portrait, pal. Uh -huh. Portrait of a big, handsome home freezer. They freeze in homes again? <laughs> no, no, no. No, the picture showed a freezer with the door open. Oh, I see. So you could look inside and see that the entire interior... Oh, let's see inside the it. Yes, yes. <laughs> the shelves and the liners and even the refrigerating coils were made of that wonderful, light, rust-proof, easy-to-clean Reynolds aluminum. I've been stabbed. <laughs> well, you see, that's what made this picture so fascinating, pal. The fact that it was so true to life, uh -huh. so real. Yeah, but an artist because couldn't be... Because no matter what mm. type of home freezer you prefer, well, you'll I... always find one important feature in all the leading makes. Yeah? That's the use of aluminum. Oh. Reynolds aluminum. Don't forget what an important thing that is, pal. I never even knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Why, the use of aluminum in the manufacture of a home freezer is a very important feature, pal. And why? Because you got to eat? <laughs> Because the higher conductivity of aluminum 
speeds up the freezing of your food, does a faster, better job. Yeah, but what that got to do with... Yes, it... aluminum plays a big part in the great home freezer boom that is slashing the family food costs throughout America. Reynolds Aluminum from the... Hey, 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 look. Loomy. From the Reynolds Metal Company. Pioneers of progress in aluminum. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> Did you say your cousin got you to join the businessmen's art class, Mr. Wilcox? Yes, yes, my cousin Big Upper Cut Wilcox. Oh, the prize fighter. How'd he come to take up art? Well, he was spending so much time on the canvas that everybody began to give him the brush, so he thought he'd capitalize on it. <laughs> so long, Molly. See you tonight, pal. Any time I can't paint as good as him, I never would have took it up. <laughs> now, you take this painting here, the one I'm working on. What do you think of this composition? What do you mean by composition? Composition, my dear, is when an artist arranges the different elements into the picture so that when it's hung in a gallery, people can look at it a minute and turn to his wife and say, Hey, Nellie, am I nuts or is that thing put up sideways? <laughs> well, in that ca uh, case, sweetheart, you have the most wonderful... <laughs> save for making a very snide remark. Yeah. Come in. Well, oh, hello, 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 my dear. Hello, Da Vinci. Oh, hi, Sag Slacks. You going to be at the businessmen's art class tonight, Doc? Certainly. As a matter of fact, McGee, we work from a model tonight. Oh, is Dr. that so? Campbell and I stopped by to pick you up. Get your hat and let's go. Okay, Molly's coming, too. I want her to see how we businessmen relieve the stresses and strains of the day's work and lighten the tension of competitive enterprise by the development of a cultural hobby. <laughs> Oh, to mention an unthinkable family relationship, brother. <laughs> Hand me my medicine case, Mayor. He's making me ill. Uh, you say you boys are using a model tonight, Mr. Mayor? Yes, tonight for the first time. Good. I'm always good at mechanical stuff. What do we use a model of, you suppose? Train, airplane, steam engine? This is life class, <laughs> egg face. We use a live female model. They do say a live one is much better, even though they don't hold a pose as well. <laughs> <laughs> Live model, eh? Hmm. Oh, now, don't look so perturbed, McGee. After all, it gives somebody a job. Dollar and a half an hour and all the influenza they can pick up. <laughs> On Thursdays and Fridays, we do landscapes and still life, respectively. It's the best way to do them. Yes. Last Friday, we painted a beautiful still that Mayor Latrivia brought us. Confiscated from a moonshiner. <laughs> Nothing, really. <laughs> McGee, what are you looking so anxious about? Well, my gosh, let's see. I, I never... I mean, a, a live model. I, well, this is the first time I ever... <laughs> that's kind of embarrassing. The way you paint a bowl of tulips would be just as embarrassing. I think you're being a little silly, McGee. How do you think artists learn to paint the so-called human form divine? From reading Esquire? Well, that ain't a bad way. <laughs> but gee, where's that? Oh, no, look, fellas. Maybe I'd better not go tonight. I'll wait for the landscape class Thursday. Oh, this... nonsense, nonsense. Relax, McGee. Mm. This is a very impersonal business. Nobody talks to the model, and the model talks to nobody. Yeah, come on, McGee. Get your stuff together. It's getting late. Yeah. Well, okay. Get your coat, Molly. All right. You understand, fellas, that it ain't so much I don't want to go. I do. Because I feel that art is a serious study, not to be approached lightly. I feel that to give oneself truly to one's art, one must approach one's subject with a deep feeling of reverence. The true artist is one which he emerges himself completely into one's masterpiece. Thank you, Grandpa Moses. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and the coys. Gather round me children and I'll tell a story of the mountains in the days when guns was law. When two families got disputing, it was bound to end in shooting. So just listen and I'll tell you what I saw. All their fighting started one bright Sunday morning. I remember when old Grandpa Coy was full of mountain dew. 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 Started 
out to find an earnest. And they scarred the mountain up with shot and shell. There was uncles, brothers, cousins. Why, they bumped each other off by the dozens. Just how many bits in the dust is hard to tell. Now the sole remaining car is Hampton Henry. While the one surviving Martin's name was Grace. Hank was set to pull the trigger when he saw her pretty figure. <sighs> you could see that love had kicked him in the face. Oh, the Martins and the Coys, they was reckless mountain boys, but they say their ghostly cousin gives you chills. Cause the hatchet sure was buried when we Grace and Henry married. It broke up the best darn feud in the Oh, this ought to be lots of fun tonight, Doctor, watching you boys paint. Yeah, I'm glad you came along, Molly. Down this way, McGee. So am I, Molly. Doc and I aren't very good at it, but we have a lot of fun. Incidentally, McGee, I still think you should have brought your smock and beret along in a package instead of wearing them like this. Nobody else is Oh, ready. that's silly. Why well, change clothes when I get here when I had them on all day long anyhow? Besides, how else can anybody tell I'm an artist? An excellent question. <laughs> I, uh, wonder what kind of a costume she'll wear, fellas. Not that it matters. I can paint anything, of course, but I... Well, I doubt that she'll be wearing hip boots and an overcoat, McGee. Mm. <laughs> this is art. The class tonight is supposed to study muscular action and body structure. And to think I joined this thing to get away from my work. <laughs> Oh, well. The uh, classroom's right around the corner there, McGee. Mm. You and Molly, go ahead. I have to get my paints and brushes out of my locker. So do I. We'll meet you in the classroom, kids, right away. All right. Go right in. Well, which way, Doc? Right? Oh, oh, never mind. We'll find it. Uh. Don't catch your heel in the hem of that smock again, dearie. Yeah. You nearly fell coming in. You know. I'm okay. My gosh, the Civic Center's a big joint. Yeah. We came here to a dance one time, remember? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me ask this guy for it. Uh, hey, bud. Yes, sir? Uh, we're kind of lost, bud. Uh, can you tell us how to get... Oh, the... well, I'll be delighted to direct you, sir. Uh -huh. I can see at a glance that you're looking for the Happy Hearts Club Masquerade and Comic Costume Party. <laughs> it's on the way. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and let, let me say, sir, that you've got on the funniest getup I've seen all evening. <laughs> <laughs> Have they been going by here in droves? Oh, no, sir. You uh, see... Oh, miss, if your father doesn't win first prize in that... <laughs> to scream your head off. What a sense of humor. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Oh, dear. I'd rather cut it out. I'm not looking for the masquerade party. Of course not. We're looking for the art class, sir. Yeah. Oh, the art class. Are you a model baby? Because if you... No, she ain't a model baby. <laughs> She's a model wife. Mine. Doggone it, but I'm an art student. And I want to know where... Oh, the... well, I'm happy to have you as a student, sir. Permit me to introduce myself. I'm your instructor, Rembrandt J. Fink. <laughs> That's your service. How do you do, I'm sure, Mr. Fink? But uh, isn't it about time for class to start? Because Oh, yes, indeed it is, madam. Right, right through this door here, please. All right. Uh, I'm kind of anxious. Where do the experts sit, bud? Because I'm the type of guy that I want... Well, just grab an easel any place, sir. Okay, okay. Oh, this will be a very interesting session tonight. Our first session with a regular model. Oh, this will be fun. <laughs> yeah, we heard about that, Remy. What, uh, what kind of costume will she wear? A bathing suit? Or... Uh, certainly not, sir. Our class tonight will concentrate on muscle and bone structure. Torso study. Oh, you hear that, Molly? She's going to wear a wedding dress. A torso. <laughs> I don't think he meant oh, that. Oh, that's great, bud, because I got lots of white paint and I can draw swell lace, boy. Have her carry a bouquet, too, because... Our we're... model, sir, will not be wearing a wedding dress or anything else. After all, when one must study the muscular structure of the body, one cannot be impeded by useless drapery. Well, no, I... <laughs> um, 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 but my gosh, I... Hey, ain't it going to be pretty chilly in here for, I mean, I mean a model without any, uh, that is, well, 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 now, don't worry about that, sir. Lillian won't mind. She's used to it. Oh. Uh, you can sit right here next to your husband, Mrs. McGee. Thank you, sir. And remember, sir, that, oh, hello, Dr. Gamble. Evening, Mayor. Hello, hello. Hi, hello. Hi, Doctor. Ready to start, Professor? Yeah, right away, gentlemen. Uh -huh. uh, set your easels up, and I'll go get the model ready. All right. A live model. 
Hey, hey, Doc, I, I don't know about this. Oh, yeah, but, Mickey, if you're going to learn to paint, you have to have a real model. Yeah, but I didn't know it was going to be that real. <laughs> My gosh, I'll, I'll be nervous. I won't be able to... Pipe, pipe down. Pipe down with you. Class is starting. Yeah, man. Huh? All right, students, quiet, please. As you know, we have engaged the model for tonight. Our first session as a real-life class. Let us all concentrate on the bone structure, the flesh tone, and the muscular action. All right, Joe, bring Lillian out now. Listen to that, Molly. She's caught cold already. <laughs> Poor kid. Dearie, you can open your eyes now. Lillian is a horse. Fibber and Molly return in a moment. You've heard about all the Reynolds aluminum built into modern refrigerators and home freezers. But every bright housewife puts in a lot more aluminum herself. And she knows it's Reynolds aluminum. It's Reynolds Wrap, the pure aluminum foil she uses to wrap food for freezing. Just as the built-in aluminum liners speeds freezing, so does Reynolds Wrap. And this moisture-proof, odor-proof aluminum foil molds around any shape, makes a tight seal without taping or tying. So with less work, you have the utmost protection. Reynolds Wrap prevents freezer burn, assures better flavor, and less shrinkage. For poultry and large cuts of meat, get heavy-duty Reynolds Wrap, half a yard wide. Popular companion to the regular 12-inch standard and jumbo roll. Ask by name for Reynolds Wrap, made by the world's largest producer of aluminum foil, the Reynolds Metals Company. You think I'd paint any better if I took off a little weight? Not a bit. What gave you that idea? Well, that instructor tonight, he said I was the most fatuous guy in the class. <laughs> me, fatuous. <laughs> Old Doc Gamble sitting there weighing 90 pounds more than me. <laughs> oh, well, favorite city. Yeah. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> Reynolds Metals Company, pioneers of progress through aluminum, has brought you Fibber McGee and Molly transcribed with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick Legrand, Cliff Arquette, and me, Harlow Wilcox. Don't forget to see Mr. Peepers, starring Wally Cox, on NBC television Sunday night. Also brought to you by Reynolds Aluminum. And be sure to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. In the stress and confusion of everyday living, we sometimes forget about the fighting in Korea. But that campaign goes on day after day, week after week. And every day our fighting men are killed and wounded. If you want to back up those fighting men, there's one simple thing that you can do. Decide right now to make a blood donation to your local Red Cross chapter or to your local blood donation center. Make a note now to call for an appointment. You'll be proud that you did. So don't put it off any longer. Call your local Red Cross chapter or your local blood donor center today. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.